The use of the software is now illustrated with the example as shown here. This is a sheet pile wall which is going to be constructed in a harbour area and the water level in the harbour is found in level minus 1.0. The ground surface on the back side is found in level 0.5 and this ground surface is also loaded with a uniformly distributed load. The design value of this load is 22.5 kN per square meter. The seabed on the front side is found in level minus 6.0. An anchor is placed in level minus 1.0, which is the same level as the water table, and this anchor is used to strengthen the wall. The substrata on both sides consist of sand to great depth. It has a characteristic angle of shearing resistance of 33 degrees a dry unit weight of 18.5 kN per cubic meter and a saturated unit weight of 19 kN per cubic meter. The wall needs to be designed in the long term state and that means that the effective cohesion and angle of shearing resistance needs to be used. Um, and it can be assumed that this wall will fail with one yield heme. So this is the information that we need to put into spooks to determine the anchor force, the driving depth and the maximum moment. Wind spooks is now open to try to work through the example in the software. So all the points in the parameters tab needs to be filled in. So let's start with the project data. This could be project one. Project name would be Example one subject will be using spooks. It is executed by me on May thirteenth, two thousand and thirteen. It is not checked or approved yet that you need other persons to do. So the calculation method, it is an anchor sheet pile wall and we assume that it would fail with one plastic hinge so we will choose failure mechanism B. Then we need to fill in the wall and we need to fill in here the top level on the back side and looking at the example we can see that that is found in 0 0.5. Then we Let's proceed to the stratification tab and we'll start with the layer on the back side. There is no angle of the ground surface. The ground surface is completely horizontal, so the angle will be kept as zero. Let's add a new layer on the back side. The set value should be 0.5 corresponding to the top level of the layer. The dry unit weight should be 18.5 corresponding to the example the saturated unit weight should be 19. As this is sand, it is cohesionless soil, so the cohesion is kept as zero, and the angle of shearing resistance is 33 degrees. There's no water flow, so the gradient is kept as zero as well, and the roughness wall is set as one, as we are in sand, and the description will be sand. So let's add a layer to the front side. The ground surface here is in minus 6.0. The dry unit weight is 18.5 again. The saturated unit weight is 19. No cohesion. The angle of shearing resistance is 33. No gradient. The roughness is 1. And the description is sand again. It would also be possible to press the bottom at front side which would uh, make a copy of the layer on the back side to the front side. So now we have defined the stratification and we will proceed to the water levels and the unit weights. The water level on the back side is found in minus one and on the front side on minus one. 
The unit weight of water is kept as 10 kN per cubic meter. This is normally sufficient in your technical calculations. So let's proceed to the loads. On the back side we have a load of 22.5 kN per square meter. On the front side we have no surface load and this ZR parameter should be the same as the level where the load acts, so this is correct as 0 0.5. So let's go and change the partial coefficients. The partial coefficient on the back side for the unit weight, for the load, and for the cohesion should not be changed. However, the partial coefficient for the angle of shearing resistance should be changed to 1.2. For water, it should be 1. On the front side, it is the same. In fact, this one should be changed to 1.2. There is no cohesion, and that is why this coefficient is not changed. And the coefficient for the load is not changed, as, as this is already the design value that is entered in the program. So press OK. So the anchor, we need to specify in which level the anchor is placed. So looking at the example, we can see that this is placed in minus 1.0. So we have no control and we have no additional pressure in this example. And therefore, we can proceed to the calculation. So the program calculates the project by an iterative procedure, not using the correction formulas. So it keeps guessing of the placement of the yielding until it's found equilibrium. Close the dots window here to the proceed to the graphic results. And when the graphic results appears, it is possible to see a drawing of the sheet pile wall where ground surfaces are marked both on front and back side. The water level is drawn along with the anchor and it is possible now to see the soil pressure distribution curve the green and the moment distribution curve with the red. Uh, it is possible to change the colors for these out here in the colors bar but for now let's keep the default colors. Down in the bottom it is possible to find the information about the anchor level the anchor force, the maximum moment, and the driving depth which is necessary for equilibrium of this sheet pile wall. In the measure bar out here, it is possible to read off the values of soil pressure, moment, and um, the level set. So for example, at this level set minus 6.6 .6 meters, the moment is found to 25.11 kN meters per meter and the soil pressure on the back side and the soil pressure on the front side can be read off along with the water pressure. Uh, this is useful to, for example, check the calculations with hand, up to hand calculations. It's also possible to, in the summary, go back and check the input of the of the project. In this way it's possible to get the overview of what you have put in so you can check that the stratification is correct, you can check that you have chosen the correct calculation method, the correct placement of the wall, the water levels, the anchor placement, the partial coefficients and everything like that. If something needs to be changed simply double click on the partial coefficients for example and the window or the partial coefficients will open and you can change something. If you change anything, you need to calculate the project once again to be able to obtain the new results.